In this Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to walk you through a photo retouching project that I was recently asked to look at. So I've got Photoshop set up right here. I'm going to go to File and Open and come out on my desktop to find my Retouch This Photo. And wow, that is quite a job here. So what I wanted to do is take a look at my setup. I've gone through to Window, Workspace, Reset My Essentials Workspace. I'm gonna go with a two column toolbox over here so it's easier to find my tools. I'm gonna to click on the picture of the currently selected tool right there. Come to my little gear pop-up menu and reset all my tools. And I'm not gonna use this section of panels right here. I do like to keep my layers panel longer in case I need it. So I can double click the word properties. That gives me more room in case I need to mess with my photo. And the first thing that I am going to do is never touch my original copy of this photo. Just in case I mess up, I can always go back to the original but I never want to screw around with the original. So I'm going to hit Command J on my Mac to make a copy jump to another layer. That would be Control J on a PC. And what I want to do is work on this copy, but I'm also going to be moving things around and I don't want to see the original photo kind of lying underneath when I start to move elements. So I'm gonna start back on the bottom layer. I'm gonna create one more brand new layer by clicking on the little plus, create a new layer icon. I'm gonna hit D for default colors and I wanna fill this layer with white, like working on top of a white sheet of paper. So if white is my background color, on my Mac I can hit Command and the big delete key that will fill that layer with the current background color. On a PC, I believe that would be control and backspace. Okay, if I were to hit option and delete on a Mac, that would fill the layer with the foreground color. Command and delete on my Mac will fill that layer with the current background color. So now I don't see my original background copy underneath here. I'm gonna come up to this top layer and the first thing that I want to do is take this whole upper half and kind of move it back down. It kind of chopped off their faces right here. So what I'm gonna do is take my lasso tool. They have kind of an uneven edge right here. So I'm just gonna skim right along this edge as close as I can. I don't have to be perfect about it because I'm gonna do some photo retouching, but I wanna get pretty darn close to that edge. And I'll take a few moments just to kind of wiggle my way around right here, right along that rip. I'm not concerned with the gap in between these sections, I'm just concerned with this whole upper part of the photo. So I'm gonna go all the way up, all the way across the top and all the way back down and let go of my mouse. And just to be safe, I don't wanna just move that around, so I'm gonna make a copy of that as well. I always wanna work cautiously. So I will hit Command J on my Mac. That would be Control J on a PC. And now you can see I've copied just the upper half of that photo. Now with my move tool, before I slightly move an object, I wanna make sure that I have the most control over this. So I'm gonna to go to view, and I wanna make sure none of my snap features are turned on. So if there are no check marks, that's good. If there were, you turn them off. Okay, so you could see right here, I can move that whole upper half. Now if I move it and I'm experimenting and I kind of screw up right here, I could just go to edit and undo. 
And now what I'm going to do is Command T on my Mac. That would be Control T on a PC to transform. And when I come outside, I get this bent arrow. So I can slightly rotate that a little bit. You can see it right there. I'll slightly rotate it to go more with this vertical edge right up here. Then I can slightly drag that down, kind of line it up as best as I can right in there. And we'll go right about there. That looks pretty good for the face. That looks pretty good for this hairline. I've got the edge lined up for the most part. And I'm gonna hit return to accept that transformation. I can see right here how I moved it down a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is zoom in and try to touch up some of the damage areas. Okay, just as a starting point, I wanna work on some of these other spots here first. So what I would recommend is I do not retouch on my actual photos. I create a brand new blank layer just for photo retouching. Okay, and that extra layer is for the clone stamp. So what I'm gonna do is take my clone stamp, and if I press and hold, you wanna make sure you're on the clone stamp, not the pattern stamp. But I'm kind of jumping the gun a little bit here. And what I mean by that is of all the photo retouching tools I have available, the clone stamp is probably the last thing I want to use. That is the hardest thing to use here in Photoshop. Okay, so let me jump back a step. I'm going to take this photo retouching layer and throw it in the trash. I don't need it yet. I'm going to take this copy right here, this upper half, and this lower half. I'm going to click and shift click because I don't want to take this and merge it down just yet. I want to play this cautiously. So I'm going to click the top layer, shift click the bottom layer, and then on my keyboard, I'm going to hold on my Mac, command, option, shift key, and hit the letter E. That will create a merged copy. So you can see it right here. I've got a merged copy. That way, again, if I screw up, I can always go back to my originals down here. Okay, so let me go back and undo a couple of steps here now that I've shown you that. And let's go back there. So now I've got a merged copy to experiment on. Okay, what I'm going to do is maybe crop this out first. I've got all this extra junk around here, and I don't really want to waste my time retouching areas out here that I'm not even going to keep anyway. So I'm going to go to my crop tool, pull the top edge down just inside the edges of the photo right there. We'll pull this side in a little bit. Pull the bottom edge up right there to the bottom most edge of that kid. And I'll pull the right side in just inside the wall right there. All of this area outside that is shaded will be deleted when I hit return on a Mac. That would be uh, enter on a PC. And now I'm ready to do some retouching. So like I said before, the clone stamp is the last thing I want to touch. Okay, I'm going to zoom in and look for the little simple areas first. Little spots right here, little stains, little scratches. So the fourth set of tools down on the right, you have your spot healing brush, literally for spots on this photo. Okay, if my brush is a little bit too big, on my Mac I can hold Control key and Option key. When I drag to the right, it gets bigger. Drag to the left, it gets a little smaller. So I want it a little bit smaller for detail work. I can see a very light stain on her chin, so I'm going to paint over that. There's another spot right there, a scratch right there, a big scratch on her neck. Now this scratch right here is right on the edge of a shadow. 
when you have damage right on a physical edge, I would definitely not recommend your spot healing brush. It works on bigger open spaces, not on edges of objects. See, if I go right there, it'll smudge that area. And I'll obviously make more damage. So I'm going to go to edit, undo, and I will leave that one for later. Here's a little bit of a scratch right there on her collar. Here's a big scratch. Uh, here's a light scratch right in here. A couple little spots right in there. Hold my space bar for my hand tool. I can push this image around. And that's what I want to start with is just a lot of little spot healing brush to get this file going at a good pace right here. Okay, the spot healing brush is almost like photo retouching with your eyes closed. It's really, really simple. So it's a good head start for a photo retouching job. I don't want to touch that one because it's right on the edge of that fold. But I can take this line from that tape. We'll take this line right here. Got a little bit of a blur there, but I can fix that with the clone stamp. I'll go around the edge, not on the edge, because again, this spot healing brush is not gonna work well. And it's not taking care of that, so I'll leave that for later. Got a little bit of a scratch here, and I noticed that was part of a chain. See if I turn all these off and look at that. I think that was a chain, but maybe not. Boy. If it was a chain, it's not anymore. I'm gonna take it out. Okay, so we'll go right down here. I do wanna complete the detail of that strap, but at least I got most of the damage out. So again, little mental note, I'll come back with my clone stamp for that area. And I'm just gonna keep spotting out these little scratches and details down in here. Go over the edge of the arm. That worked well, so I'll keep going there. See if that works, good. And I'm gonna keep spotting out these little details here. Okay, that doesn't look good. So let's go to undo. And let's start right next to it. There we go. Okay, got a little spot down in here that I can take out. I wanna look for anything that kind of jumps out to me as little stains or blotches or blemishes. Um, got a pretty good start here. This area of the coat is looking pretty good. Spot out any of these little light scratch marks here. There we go. Any little blends of value that I think look off. Uh, let's try this edge right here. That looked good. Keep going up and up. Okay, that smudged it out, so I don't want to do that. I'll undo that. And let's go around here. Let's see. I've got this edge, but that tape ran right on that fold. So I'm going to leave that for my clone stamp for later. But let's see if I can take out some of this area. And that's just way too big for the spot healing brush. So that's going to be saved for my clone stamp later on. Okay, we'll take out a few little spots of damage up in here. And we'll take out any of these dark little spots right up in here and we'll just keep working my way across any of these little areas that kind of stand out to me there we go got a little damage right in there that we can take care of a few little bright spots here in the hair that don't look like they belong in her hair and let's go up here See if I can get that. That creates a weird bumpy edge, so I'm going to undo that. That's right on the edge of her hair, so I'm going to save that for my clone stamp. And let's take out a few more areas around in here. Again, little areas that are easy enough to deal with with this spot healing brush. We'll take out a little scratch right in there. That's right along that hairline. This is in his hair, so I can take care of that. Brush that out. Brush a little bit of that tape out right there. 
Got a little scratch coming across the cheek area and a few little scratches right there. Got all this coming out. It's looking good. And let's see what else I can get rid of. A few little brighter spots right in there. There we go. Okay. That's looking good. Here's a nice dark area on his shirt we can get rid of. There's a little spot right in there. But you can see that stripe is not supposed to come all the way across. So I'm going to edit and undo that. That's because my spot healing brush pulled pixels from the sides and kind of bridged the gap where I did not want it to bridge the gap. So I got to keep areas that are, that are right on the edge. I got to keep those for my clone stamp. So again, spot healing brush is for the simple open spaces right in here. Those are easy to deal with with the spot healing brush. Uh, here's a big damage spot right here. And again, this tape line runs right across those lines here. So I'm going to leave that for my clone stamp. Um, not really sure what I'm going to do with this upper part. But here, let me turn off the top layer. You can see all the damage I've taken out there already. And I'm gonna save this. Okay, since I am working on a layered file, I'm gonna go to File, Save As. I'll just keep the same name. I'm just gonna save it on my desktop for there for safekeeping. And now I wanna try some clone stamping. Okay, we'll practice on a simple area like right in here, like I first encountered. So again, brand new blank layer. I will call that photo retouching. And when I take my clone stamp, the clone stamp by default is set up to work on the current layer that I am on. The problem with that is there's nothing on this current layer. So what I do is I tell the clone stamp, sample from all layers. So I can pick up pixels from here and paint them back up onto here. Okay, this brush is kind of big, so I'm going to hold my Control and Option key on my Mac. That would be Control and Alt on your PC. And on a PC, you use your right mouse button. On a Mac, I hold Control, Option, and just click and drag left and right. I'm going to go a little bit smaller for detail work. Okay, the way this works on my Mac, I hold my Option key for my target. I'm going to target the edge of that collar, Option, click. Now I let go of everything and I have a preview. So I can move that preview to the side of her collar right here. And now paint and clone that collar. Option click, clone, option click, clone, option click and clone, option click and clone, option click and clone. I gotta come in with a really small brush to get this little detailed spot right in there. You come up a little softer there. Okay, and I got a little scratch, option click and paint over that scratch right there. I can option click to the left, paint over to the right, option click to the left and paint up to the right. Right here, option click, move and paint a little bit. Option click, move and paint a little bit more. Option click, move and paint. And I'll keep doing that. Option click, paint, option click, paint, option click, paint, option click, paint. And I can keep constantly sampling pixels and dropping them on top of other pixels. Okay, right down here, like I said, I wanted that strap to continue. So I'm going to go with a slightly larger brush. Option click up here. And then paint a little bit more right down in there. Option click and paint. Option click and paint. Move up. Option click. Move down. Paint. Up to option click. Down to paint. 
up to option click and down to paint. So we'll get a little bit more of that coming down that area right there. Okay, I've got a brown stain right in here. I'm gonna leave that for later. I'm gonna show you another method for dealing with color stains on a photo. Notice right here, I've got damage right on this edge. So I'm gonna option click down here, move that preview up and keep painting up that edge right there. Option click below, paint up above. Option click below, paint up above. Option click below, paint up. Option click below and we'll paint up. Now this is getting some of this shadow coming way up too high. So I'm gonna deal with that in a minute. You can see what it's doing right there too. So you wanna to try to sample close. That's why I use my clone stamp last. It really picks up everything you option click. So you can accidentally drag shadows way up here where they don't belong. Okay, so I'm gonna option click there and try to bring in some of these lighter values. Option click and then paint, option click and paint, option click and paint. Let's go up here option click and then come back down and paint option click above paint down below okay i went too far so i'll just back it up option click above paint down below that looks good option click below paint up above option click below and paint up Option click below and then paint up. Option click and move. I'm constantly on the move when I'm sampling pixels. Option click below, paint up above. Option click below, paint up above. Option click and paint. Okay, there's before and there's after. It's looking pretty good. I'll option click here and paint some of that shadow coming back down right in there. See if I can connect some of that wall space right in there. Get rid of some of that shadow, there we go. Okay, option click below, paint above to get rid of that dark spot. Option click above and paint down below to get rid of that spot. Option click above, paint down below. Option click above and paint down below. And I'm gonna keep working my way across. Option click above, paint down below. Option click the grays in the hair area right there. Let's paint out a little softer curl right there. Uh, option click below, paint up above. We'll paint out some of this area of the hair right in there. Option click the edge of the curl Paint more of that edge right in there. There we go. All right, got a nice curl in the hair. See a little spot right in there. And we'll option click and just kind of like the uh, spot healing brush, I'm just gonna option click and then click, take whatever's in the circle and drop it over the bad part right there. And I got a couple little bright spots here in the hair that I wanna get rid of. Okay, this area right here, there's like color stains. So here's a great trick. Right up here, I have normal blending mode for my clone stamp. So basically what that does is if I option click any pixel, it will repaint that pixel exactly the way it appears. So obviously I will undo that. If I am not concerned with the detail, but more concerned with the colors, I can set my blending mode here from normal clone stamp blending mode all the way down to color. Now I can option click color and paint that same color over. Okay, the problem is it keeps picking up the details too and I don't want that. So I'm gonna go to edit and undo. Okay, what you have to keep in mind is when you are sampling on a separate layer, 
this method doesn't work. So as long as I've got a good start, I'm going to take this top layer and let's bring this layers panel out so you can see this. I'm going to take this top layer now that I've got a good start and I'm going to merge it down. Now all those retouching spots are now part of this layer here. Okay, now let's see if the color blending mode works. Option click. Now it works. There we go. Option click the color. See? All it's doing is blending that color. Option click and blend that out. Option click and blend that out option click and blend if that looks a little bit off i'm not too concerned with that i'm not concerned with any of the value on this photo because i don't like this yellowish tint old photos typically don't turn yellow so i'm going to show you a trick for that a little later too but i'm going to continue my process now again just to be safe if I merge down that layer before, I'll just make another brand new layer and continue where I left off. Photo, retouching. I'm sampling from all the layers. I'm right on the edge of this cheek, so I'm gonna option click here and paint in the edge of that jawline right there. Now remember, I gotta switch this back. I'm done blending colors, so I'm going to go all the way back up to normal mode for my clone stamp when I need to continue. And photo retouching is a blending of multiple tools. I'm going to switch back to my um, spot healing brush because I can take out these little spots right here. And you'll notice it doesn't work. Remember, I'm on a blank layer. This is what Photoshop sees. Okay, so my spot healing brush can only work on the actual photo. This blank layer is for clone stamping. So I can always jump around. Let me drag this out again. Let me take this layer and merge it down one more time. So I have a standalone layer for my spot healing brush. And now that will work beautifully. Okay, I can always jump around, create new layers, merge layers when I don't need them, create new ones again. That's what's great about photo retouching. It's very flexible here in Photoshop. Okay, so now I'm getting to a little bit of detail on that uh, face area, especially around the ear. So I'm going to jump back to my clone stamp for a tiny little spot option click and sample option click and sample option click the ear and i want to move just a very slight bit to do very minimal photo sampling here there we go kind of sculpt out the shape of that ear right in there maybe round that off a little bit more there okay I'll come back to my spot healing brush. I've got a couple of little tiny spots here that I want to get rid of. One right on her upper eyelid right there. That looks good. And let me zoom out. So now let's look at that face. Here's before and there's after. Yeah, not too bad. Okay. All right, let's take a look at this hairline. Wow, that ripped right across that hairline so technically i'm gonna have to get a little more creative with some artistic freedom and give him a photoshop haircut so i'm gonna take my clone stamp not really sure how this is gonna work so i'm gonna create a blank layer and let's call this um haircut okay i've got a soft edge brush to softly blend the edge of his hair. I'm gonna option click above, paint down below right in here. Option click below and paint above. I'm gonna kind of approach it from the top, approach it from the bottom, approach it from underneath and try to blend in a soft kind of transition of this hair 
down near his forehead area right in here. Kind of round off this area right in here. I'll option click and create some hair down in that space right in there. Let's go down in here. And the reason why I'm making more, okay, we'll make him this little uh, emo kid here. The reason why I'm making more and more of this is I can blend it out in a minute. Okay, because again, I'm not sure how much of that hair we really need. So I'm going to give him too much hair. It gives me room to experiment on my photo. So you can see right there, I really covered up that forehead. Okay, what I do now is create a layer mask right down here. There is my layer mask. Your layer mask is like a Photoshop eraser. So I hit D for default colors, X to switch to black, and I take my normal paintbrush. Okay, what that'll do is allow me to scrape away some of this hair. Kind of, again, giving him a little Photoshop haircut right there. Trim his hair. Okay, we'll go a little bit higher. Give him a softer transition right in there. Maybe take out some of the hair right in there. But I've got a nice little hairline. It's still right on the edge of that cut mark. So I'm going to take this layer. I'm done using the layer mask, so I click on the trash. And I say, apply the mask. Permanently erase that little hairline or that extra pixels that I erased. I'm going to take this haircut. And again, let me bring this out so you can see that. I'm going to merge it back down once again. And now I'm going to take my spot healing brush. Let's make that a little bit bigger. Take out some of this scratch mark right there. See if I can blend or soften up that transition a little bit. It looks a little better. Okay, now it doesn't stand out as much. And to soften that area a little bit more, I'll come back in with my clone stamp. I'm just coming in with a small brush here and just kind of option click and work my way around that area right in there. Get rid of some of the scratches right in here. And let's bring, whoops, that's too bright. And let's clone a little bit more of that hair out right there. Okay. Again, little digital haircut. So when I zoom out, got a nice little hairstyle right there. Okay, she looks great. He's looking good from the neck down, except for these little scratches I've got right down in here. So again, clone stamp for the physical edge of an object. Now I'm getting into some detail area and I don't want to screw this up. So I create another layer again. You get the idea. I'm not going to keep naming these layers. You've seen what I do with those. Option click and we'll move across right there. Option click and we'll work my way down. Option click and we'll work my way across right on the edge of that stripe to recreate that little corner right there. Option click above and paint the gap down. Option click above and paint down and down and down. Now I can option click this edge, come across and paint out that edge right there. Option click there come across and paint down. There we go. Rebuilt that little gap between those stripes. That's looking pretty good. Uh, I've got a couple little gaps right in here that I need to touch up. Option click and paint. Option click and paint. Option click and paint. Option click and paint my way up. And go right up in there. There we go. Okay, this is a pretty big scratch. I'm going to leave that for later. I'm not sure what's going on in that part of the photo. So might have to do a little guesswork on that area. So I'll leave it for later. Okay, this kind of sucks. It's right on the edge of that collar. Like, why can't things rip right here? They have to go right on the edge of the collar. Are you kidding me? So I'm going to work my way around that. 
I get uh, kind of lazy, like, ah, oh, that's going to be a lot of work, so I'll save that for later. I don't want to deal with that hassle yet. <clears throat> and let's go all around these little spots here. Option, click, and paint. Option, click, and paint. Option, click, and paint. Option, click, and paint. And I am constantly option clicking, painting, option click, paint, option click, paint, option click, paint, option click and paint, option click and paint, option click and paint. And we'll go right across that little bridge right there. Okay, I'm just working with a really small brush for these little detailed areas, like right on the edge of that collar. We'll rebuild some of this damage space right here. Build some of that back in. There we go. And I'll paint some of this gray, some of this dark part right in there to kind of smooth out that curve. There we go. Uh, got a little scratch on the fingertips right there. All right, option click and paint out a little spot and that little spot and that little spot right up there. These are looking good. I think that's a little tooth. I can't really tell. I'm going to leave it in there for now, but ah, man, that's always a hard part when I don't know these people. Um, her lips have a little bit of glare. His has a lot, so I'm going to see... These teeth over here are kind of darker gray, so that one doesn't make sense to me. Sorry, kid, but I'm going to take that out. Uh, it's just not looking right, being so bright in that space right there. So let's just take some of this gray over there and pop it back in. So his teeth kind of blend out. I'll take some of this gray from his lips, bring it across, and we'll bring that brighter color across right there there we go so they don't stand out as being so glossy anymore there's before and after here's this collar area right here there's before and after okay clone stamp let's come in with a larger brush tip i can option click down here rebuild that little edge right in there and let's just continue our way up. Option click below, paint up above. Option click below, paint up above. Option click below and keep working my way up. Option click below, paint across right there. I don't want so much of a dark shadow up here. There we go. Option click above, paint across, option click the edge of his head and recreate more of that edge. And I'll just keep slowly working my way up. Option click below, paint up. Option click below, paint up. Option click below and paint up. Option click below and paint up. Okay, and again, this photo is getting brighter up here you could tell that there's been a little bit of photo retouching because it's looking like a dark kind of blend across here so i'm going to deal with that in a minute i'm going to keep going here option click above and we'll paint down below right there i want to make sure that line looks kind of straight here there we go option click above line up my preview and paint down below there we go and then i'll option click the edge of his head right in there let's go with a smaller brush try to get that gap to come right down to the edge of his head there we go bigger brush to kind of open up this spacing right here option click below and paint up option click below paint up a little bit and now I'm going to be sampling some of these brighter colors up in here and keep working my way up option click and work my way up 
option click to work my way down right there. Option click to work my way back up and up. Okay. Now I'm getting into some really weird kind of color transitions up in this space. Okay, so this is going to be the trickier part over in here. Let's get some of this out. And I want to sample there and bring that over to there. There we go. Yeah, that kind of bumped it too much. Let's go here. Sample my way down. Kind of clean up that edge right there. Okay, that looks good. Now I can option click here and jump across and kind of bridge that little gap. There we go. Option click and work my way up. All right. Here we are so far. There's the original and there's where we're at right now. Okay, it's looking good. I don't like how this is kind of blending across there. So I'm going to require a totally different layer for that area. But I want to take out most of this damage. Remember to save your progress. I almost forgot that. And I'm going to keep going with this clone stamp. I'm going to option click down here. Keep painting that up and up. Option click below. Keep painting that all the way up. And I'm going to keep working that right up into this area. All the way up if I can. As far up as I'd like to go. Because you're going to get a hard edge right here. So I'm going to show you how to blend that out. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Um, again, I'm just not sure what's happening way up here. And I don't know how far I want to bring these drapes up. Probably want to bring them up all the way. As uh, Sorry, as I'm talking to myself here, trying to evaluate what the heck is going on here. So let's bring some of this value back down a little bit, kind of blend that out a little. But notice how this comes down and then it gets really dark right there. Okay, so to blend this out, I'm gonna lower the opacity. I'm gonna blend this down to maybe 30, 25 to 30%. Now when I option click above, I gradually fade that out like that. Like putting a little makeup on the wall. <laughs> there we go. I can option click here and just gradually fade that darker shadow out so it blends into the wall. Option click above and just fade that back down into the wall right here. So I get a much smoother transition of values right in there. And I'm going to keep doing that with this lower opacity and just kind of blend out these values here if I can so they don't look as harsh and we'll keep painting it like a 25 to 30 percent opacity right there and just keep slightly blending out values to tone down that harsh transition of color right up in here going right there blend that out so I'm getting a much smoother appearance I can option click above and just brush some light cloning right in here option click above brush some light cloning so I get a smoother transition I'm gonna option click below paint a few values up Again, with that lower opacity. It's like adding a little blush to the wall. Option click above. Tone down those values up here. That is looking nice. Uh, let's see what I got. Okay, this is a, it's a nice, soft transition. That's still looking a little harsh right there. So I'm going to option click above. And just lightly brush in 25 to 30% opacity here. Get that right in there. There we go. And gently brush out those values. That looks a lot better. 
option click below we'll keep painting up above softening up the value transition right there and I'll option click over here paint over there option click below paint above as I've been saying over and over and over again and I'm just gonna keep gradually replacing these transitions of value but I am starting on these shadows down below so it I do get that continuation of this background detail I just want it to kind of blend out a little softer right in here okay and let's get that right in there all right this area is like too close to her head so I might want to jump over here option click and then just kind of paint up and down a few times option click paint up and down a few more times option click paint up and down and kind of bring that lighter value across this space here there we go okay I've got a little softer transition it helps when you zoom out so you can see what's happening with your value changes sometimes you develop that kind of tunnel vision here and that's looking pretty good for the most part command s let's save that i'm going to look down here at this corner and i really again i don't know what's going on there so i'm going to make a brand new blank layer we'll just call that layer bottom left corner and i'm going to set my clone stamp back to a hundred percent and I'm just gonna clone some of this extra stuff. Um, here's like a little crease, so we'll bring that a little over a little further. There's some of this brownish tone. Here's some more little pattern work right in there. Let's bring that down into there. And then the rest, I'm just gonna kind of fade this to dark right in here. Option click above, paint down below option click and bring that little crease down into that corner option click above and let's paint down below right in there just kind of bring that to a slow little fade right in there who's gonna notice it's way off i don't even know what it is i think it's part of a sleeve or something but as long as i tone that down these are looking really bright in that corner so again i'm going to lower my opacity to about 25 to 30 percent option click above and just paint over that to tone that down we still have a little detail we just don't see it as much okay they're looking good pretty much from the head down i don't really see anything that's jumping out maybe bring this back up to a hundred percent opacity option click to take out a few little creases down in here a few little spots on her sleeve a few little bright spots that i can option click above paint down below option click above paint down below right in there that's looking pretty good all right Wow, I'm just still struggling with this background wall. It's killing me here. But I do like the way they're looking. So what I'm going to do at this point, I really like how this is looking. So I'm going to take this layer, shift click, shift click. Those three are my photo retouching that I've done. We'll pull this out again. And now with multiple layers selected, I can click the pop-up and merge those selected layers okay so now we've got one kind of merged copy of all our photo retouching what i'm going to do at this point is convert my colors okay before i deal with the rest of this wall let's convert this like i said old photos don't turn yellow when they turn yellow they look like they were um 
faded from an old newspaper. I want this to look like a true kind of sepia tone. So the typical thing that people do, the typical mistake is they go to image menu, adjustments, and then just pull all the color out by choosing black and white. That's okay, but old photos don't turn dull and gray and lifeless. They have some tone to them. This has no tone. This has kind of a dull metallic look. So I'm going to click cancel. What I do to give my older photos more of a vintage type of look is I go to image menu, adjustments, hue and saturation. And in the bottom right corner, you have a colorize. So I'm going to click that. And the default is to colorize the hue to a red, which is fine. But I'm going to pull this hue slider over a little bit to more of an orangish red, more of like a br reddish brown. Then I take my saturation. You can see right here, there's a lot of that reddish brown. But if I slowly start to desaturate that, you don't want to pull it all the way to the left because there's that dull metallic gray. I'm going to take this and just slightly pull it till I get a warm gray tone. Kind of like that. Okay, here's before and here's after. Maybe pull that a little bit more. There we go. And I'll click OK. I don't like the gold, but look at all that damage retouching we've done in this space of this time. All right, not bad. Especially when we look at that to that. All right, let's go to save one last time. And then to deal with this wall, I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna take my lasso tool and I'm just gonna select a chunk of this wall right here. In order to make a copy, I can hit Command J. That will make that selected area jump to its own copy. And now with my move tool, I can go to Edit, Content Aware Scale. Oops, and my Photoshop just crashed. So that's why it's a good thing I save my files. So let me restart Photoshop here. Yikes, really glad I've been saving my process because that would be really bad. So let me go to file and open here and let me go get my retouched photo one more time. That is an excellent lesson. Save your work frequently, okay? Otherwise, I would have been cursing all over this video. So, um, good. Save. All right, let's do this again. That was scary. I'm going to click and drag right here. Take another section of that wall. Command J. That would be Control J on a PC. And if I were to just hit Command T to transform that section of the wall... Notice the lines are not going to line up with my photo anymore. So I don't want to do that. So I'll hit my escape key in the upper left corner of my keyboard. And what I'm going to try instead is edit content aware scale. Now if I hold my shift key, I'm going to pull this edge slowly up. Content aware keeps its uh, proportions a little better like that. Okay, let's go up. Heck, let's go all the way up. That looks like a nice little continuation. I'll hit return. I like that so far. It's not bad. It's going to get a little dicey over here, but we'll try it. First, save my progress. I don't want to lose that. Okay, now let's jump back down here and let's try that with this section of the wall right in here. Let's take as much of that good wall as we can. Command J, edit, content aware scale. And if I hold shift to distort, I just want to stretch that up. 
right up into there. That looks like a good continuation there. So I'll hit return to accept that. All right. File and save. Now I'm going to be really cautious about this. And I'm going to try this midsection. Not Probably not going to work as well, but let's jump back down to where that wall is. I'll take this mid, oops, let's go with my lasso. Take this midsection right above her head as much as I can. There's not much of the wall there, but we'll see what we can do with it. Command J to make it jump to a separate layer. Edit content aware scale. Hold my shift key to stretch and distort. And I just want to do a little bit. If I pull it too far, I don't know if that's really going to show very well. Let's just do a little bit. And I'll hit return. This is looking pretty good. I'll save my progress again. And now I'm going to take this and shift click and shift click and shift click. And I will merge those layers together. Okay, there we go. And my layers panel just popped out. There we go. Let's bring that back up. All right. Now let's take a big section of the wall right here. All of that. Because now I've merged them. Command J. And let's go to edit. Content aware scale. Whoops. Now it's out of proportion. So I'm going to hit my escape key because I forgot to hold my shift key. So let's zoom out right here so you can see that. Edit content aware scale. Hold shift. Let's bring that wall all the way up. And I'll hit return. Now I just have to retouch a little corner of this wall up here and I can do that with my clone stamp. I will option click down below, continue that edge all the way up right there. So option click down below and continue that edge all the way up. That looks pretty good. There's a little hard edge right here. I can kind of see a faint edge right above her head. So I'm going to option click and kind of tone those down a little bit. Let's option click above, tone down some of these values here. Where I'm getting that value transition happening. Because I don't want people to think that I stretched out the wall. So I want it to look as believable as possible. Let's go right in there. Okay, let's see a little bit of a value change right in there. A little bit of a value change across there. That looks good. All right. Now, I want some of that darker value up here because we have a lot of dark in the bottom half of this composition, a whole bunch of light in the upper half. So I'm going to make another brand new blank layer. And actually... I'm going to try a blending mode instead. Let me get rid of that. Let's take this extra wall, merge it down onto the photo. Okay. Then I'm going to take my rectangle marquee. Let's save my progress. And I'm going to select this whole upper half right here. Command J on my Mac. That would be Control J on a PC. And all I did was copy the whole upper part of the wall. So what I'm going to do to try and blend it is give it a blending mode of multiply. Okay. And now multiply makes values darker. So I'm taking the original value of the wall and doubling it up, multiplying it. Okay, what I can do here now is create a layer mask. This is my eraser in Photoshop. D for default colors. If the mask is white, you don't want to paint with white. So I will hit X to switch to black. And to blend these two together, this layer to blend in with the rest, 
I'm gonna take my brush with a big, soft brush. I'm gonna hold Control and Option on my Mac and drag up so I get a nice, soft kind of spray brush. And then I'm gonna lightly scrape away this hard edge. Just get rid of the hard edge first. And now I'm gonna lower the opacity. I don't wanna scrape the entire wall away, so I always go anywhere from 25 to 30. And I'm just gonna brush away a little bit up and over their heads like this. Just get it to fade out right in there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, a little bit more to get a softer transition. Now I can take this layer, hit Command J, and now I have Multiply on top of Multiply. I can erase right over here on the right. On my layer mask, I erase a little bit more. So I get a softer transition right up in there. If I wanted to, Command J. I come up to my layer mask, and let's just fade a little bit more. Right up in there. Let's get a nice transition so the wall doesn't look all flat. Do a little fade, accentuate it a little more, and a little more at the top. If that's still too dark, I've got an opacity. I can slide that back a little bit. Get a softer faded transition right there. And until my quote unquote customer sees this and approves this, I'm gonna stop at this point. I'm gonna save one more time. And the last thing I wanna do is maybe darken in the overall values of this photo. But obviously I can't do it layer by layer by layer. I have a lot of layers here. So what I'm gonna do is use an adjustment layer. Okay, an adjustment layer is a tonal value change that floats above your photo. It's a non-destructive way to edit values in a photo. So right here on the adjustments panel, I'm gonna go to the second one on this first row. It's called levels. Levels is great because it breaks down your photos into their three most basic values. Highlights, midtones, and shadows. I can instantly see there's not a pure bright light. Okay, the lightest part, oops, let's get rid of that. The lightest part of this photo is right down in here. It's got like a 10% gray. The darkest part, there are no blacks in this photo. Okay, you follow this little mountain range. The darkest value is right about here. So notice if I take this slider and drag it to the right, I can increase the contrast. That also pushed my midtones to the right. So I can bring in a little bit more highlights. Not a lot, because I'm going to lose detail here. So I want to maybe keep that minimal. But since my shadows push my midtones to the right, maybe I bring the midtones back up a little bit. Here's before, and there's after. There we go. And I'm going to keep that for now. So let's go to File, Save, and uh, I wish you good luck on your own photo retouching projects in the future. I think this turned out pretty darn nice. All right. See you in the next tutorial whenever you get around to it.